Time, Real and Imaginary, by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, 1772-1834. On a wide level of a mountain's head, I knew not where, but t'was some fairy place, their pinions, ostrich-like, for sails outspread, Two lovely children run an endless race, a sister and a brother. This far outstripped the other, yet ever runs she with reverted face, and looks and listens for the boy behind, for he, alas, is blind. O'er rough and smooth with even step he passed, and knows not whether he be first or last. Okay, this poem is by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Um, let's see, he's one of the or the one of the founders of the uh, Romantic movement, together with William Wordsworth. Yeah, he was a poet, a critic, a philosopher, uh, a theologian. Um, <clears throat> he originally came from Devon in the West Country, but lived most most of his life in London after that. He went to Jesus College, Cambridge, and um, he was also addicted to opium. And opium was uh, clearly a problem for him. He's probably most famous for his, uh, his poems, The Rime of the Ancient Mariner and Kubla Khan. So let's see, what's this about? Well, I think this poem is about the the passage of time, yeah, and how time is passing. And the poem describes a, a boy and a girl who who are running, yeah, they're running on the top on the top of a mountain, but it's a flat area. It's probably a meseta, yeah, um, and. Um, it, it, the, the image of them running is the passage of time and how time uh, moves on for them. So, on a wide level of a mountain's head, I knew not where, but t'was some fairy place. So this sets the scene. There's a wide flat place at the head of a mountain. So the use of the word head is personifying the mountain. Mountains have a peak, and it's quite unusual, a wide level place at the top of a mountain. Maybe it's Table Mountain in uh, South Africa. And then he adds, I knew not where, I didn't know where this was, but it was some fairy place. So this to me sounds a bit like an opium dream. So um, this is where we are. Their pinions, ostrich-like for sails outspread, two lovely children run an endless race, a sister and a brother. So a pinion is the um, second part of a bird's wing. Yeah? Birds have one part and then the second part, so where the flight feathers are. So here this is a metaphor or a simile, their pinions, pinions, is a, this is using a metaphor for this part of their arms. Their arms are spread out and then ostrich-like, like an ostrich. Okay, so an ostrich can't fly, but um, I, I, it gives this scene of, the, of big legs and uh, these wings. And I think the the children are running with their arms out um, as if they were sails, yeah, they were um, the sails of a ship. They make me think of the sails of uh, the wings of an aeroplane. Two lovely children run an endless race. So they're two children running, yeah, and notice this is an endless race. So this is a race without without end. So I think that this. Uh, level mountain head. This is time. This is time itself. And they're running through time. And then these two are a sister and a brother. 
I think maybe this also maybe gives me the idea of uh, man and woman going through time. Anyway, <laughs> this far outstripped the other. So this talks about the girl. Yeah? Um, so she she runs a, a, a head. She outstripped. To outstrip is to go further than, to go faster than, to go more distance than. Um, yet ever runs she with reverted face. So reverted face, she's always looking back. So the sister is always looking back at her brother. Yeah, or maybe women. This is the image of uh, women who they they uh, look after men because men are just so incompetent. Um, I think it, it's something that they feel, and looks and listens for the boy behind. For alas, for he alas is blind. So she's looking and taking care and making sure that the boy is all right because he's blind. So maybe he's saying that men are blind, that uh, we don't know what we're doing, yeah, and women are far wiser. Or maybe this is also gives the idea that um, people that are able to do things should help and look after people who are not able to, um, and to try and instruct them and to help them not get into problems. So the sister's running ahead and she's always looking round, uh, listening and checking that her brother's okay. Or rough and smooth, with even step he passed. So, or, over. So he goes over rough and smooth, with even step. So he uh, runs evenly. He doesn't seem to trip on anything, but notice over rough and smooth so sometimes times are rough and difficult and sometimes they are easy but he keeps going despite the conditions and knows not whether he be first or last so he and he doesn't know where his sister is he doesn't know if she's ahead of him or behind him um, so he doesn't know his position in time or in the world and uh, maybe this is also um, men are always worrying about coming first, yeah, or not being last or being the winner, yeah. And maybe this is talking about a characteristic of men as well. Um, so they're they're blind and they always want want to win. They're so competitive. So enough. If you enjoyed the video give it a rating, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon. Bye for now. Time, Real and Imaginary by Samuel Taylor Coleridge